So Bengal Patachitra is a folk art found in uh, Bengal region of the Indian subcontinent. Most notably today in Midnapur district in West Bengal and regions like Rajshahi and all in Bangladesh. This folk art is very old. It, it, it has existed since the time of uh, the Buddhism, rise of Buddhism in Indian subcontinent around 300 BC and it has existed and been transformed during its course. But mostly in Bengal Patachitra, these are the three aspects that it deals with. So they are the heroic aspects of life, like Ramlila and aspect of karma and purushkar, and aspect of bhakti or devotion and romantic aspects. And the third aspect is an aspect of shakti or power. That is the meta metaphysical aspect of life. So our presentation is divided into three analysis, the semiotic analysis, the iconic analysis and thematic analysis. So let's move on with the semiotic analysis. So here, uh, here are some salient features of this uh, of this folk art. The first feature being that this tradition has bold use of colors. By bold use, I mean they use colors of seemingly discorded nature and they use it boldly throughout different parts. For example, here both pink and blue has been used against a background of red and here again blue and white stripes are present again here a white background is present and the main object these leaves are made of green sap green here it is pink a more more common composition of colors would have been a white or bluish background at the big back over here a green object and a white petal or something similar. The next thing is their shapes are mostly organic. Ex I mean even their parts of the human figure and objects they make rounded shapes and avoid using geometrical figures except at borders. In borders they use mostly simplified figures and decorative. They are mostly decorative. The paintings are generally two-dimensional. They don't show aspects of perspective or uh, foreshortening. And all objects have a boundary. This is very important because they don't they don't merge objects and don't show effects of shading and uh, effects of lighting and all. They use colors flatly, although they mix the colors from five or six basic pigments. Now let's move on to the colors that they use. Now all colors are extracted from natural sources. They don't use artificial colors traditionally. And they are extracted from either vegetable sources or earth sources or mineral sources. And there are five basic pigments and all other pigments are mixed from them at different combinations. They are white or sankha, yellow or hingula, black or kala, brown or dhau, or indigo or blue or neela. Now the gum which is obtained from wood apple or the kapitha tree is mixed with the colors in a coconut shade and applied to give a glossy effect and an overall protective coat. Most paintings are done on, done on palm leaves, coarse cotton and fabric and on, and on tussar silk. Now on figure, most figures are simplified and these figures resemble the trend of, that is found in classical Egyptian or Mesopotamian figures. For example, their body, although very simplified, has a frontal chest and torso and a profile view of their face and feet. Their, their human proportion is not very strict, they change it according to for example here the leg is much small almost equal to that of a head and here the leg is of about twice the, the proportion of that of the head so they don't stick to a, a strict human proportion rather they change it according to the placement and importance of the figure and this pic their pictures show depth or emphasis by vertical placement so this sun is emphasized by its separate placement from the rest of the painting 
and by the directionality of the eyes of these other figures on the right and bottom corner of the picture towards the sun and also by overlap yeah now i will tell you the very interesting part of how these paintings are made actually we will start from the very basic we will start from the very basic the brushes these brushes are usually made from the hair of domestic animals usually square hair brushes are used and for fine brushes they use rat hair and for coarse brushes they use buffalo hair they use kia plant for drawing thick lines and sadhai coconut shell for mixing colors they use ghasa patthar uh, pebble stone grinding stone pesto stone for different kinds of filling and other purposes now now the most important part the base the canvas the canvas is prepared by the artist themselves the cloth which is usually made of tussar silk is coated with soft fine white chalk stone powder and glued with a glue made from tamarind seeds sometimes they also add rice powder to give stiffness now this preparatory work is quite arduous and this is left for days to develop in size strength and semi observable surface now the cloth is trimmed from the sides and cut to required sizes now the coloring part now it is a tradition to paint the border first though you will fascinated to know that there is no use of pencil or charcoal for preliminary lines next the main figures are painted and drawn and the red background which is also known as pehli rang bhara or first coloring is done and then the figures are completed and the decoration stuff like giving a pen work feel is given now the final step is the protection this for this the painting is held over charcoal fire and lacquer is applied this makes the painting water resistant durable and gives a glaze varnish look now apart from these bengal pots or gold painting there is also orissa carvings this now these carvings are done on palm leaves these carvings are very delicate these carvings are so delicate that even a small break would mean that the artist had to scratch from the start from the scratch and discard the whole thing uh the detailing is quite fine and a black dye is applied afterwards uh these carvings are even coin sized so it is when then it is unfolded on uh, this stuff and the other form also include painting wooden bottles boxes bowls toys toys and wooden doors coconut shells and ganjifa noise playing cards also painted chitra pothis which is nothing but basically uh, painted palm leaves stacked over one another with the help of a string now in iconic analysis we would like to start with choice of subject uh the main subject of bengal chitrapata has always has been ancient gods and goddesses and the life events and story related to the gods like uh, uh, in odisha patachitra they have shown uh, uh, indian gods in traditional in traditional positions in bengal patachitra they depict a story of uh, uh, the gods and goddesses uh, by showing scrolls and singing uh, songs to narrate the story they have also in included modern trends of civilization and problem of society like tsunami and aids control and pulse polio to increase our awareness of the society now for presentation of images bengal Chit patachitra is very colorful like they use very glossy and very bold colors uh, this makes the uh, this artwork very very soulful and very catchy and dynamic and the human figures uh, have very strong facial expression uh, this strong facial expression helps the viewer to relate easily to the situation or emotion of the figures and third use of contrasting colors uh, bangal patachitra use contrasting colors to gain focus uh, when they they want to show dominance or the importance of a certain character they would uh, they would color the figure with contrasting color like red with black or green with blue and that that immediately makes the part the center of focus so uh, it uh, it is clearly it and clearly related with the focus and the importance of the figure and third positioning and orientation of figures like bangal patachitra uh, use the central placement of the dominant figure uh, the pencil figures are mostly placed centrally and the other less important figures are placed randomly like in odisha patachitra they were governed by the empress and authority so they use the concept of mass balance but in bengal patachitra they were free and they do not use any concept of mass balance and color balance so it clearly shows the sense of freedom in this artwork
Now, uh, the emphasis on principal figures. Bangal Pati Chitra emphasizes only on principal figures and the background is not given with much details. And the orientation of figures depends on the event going on in the certain scroll. But mostly they show a side profile view to give maximum details and it also generates a sense of movement in the artwork. And lastly, Bangal Pati Chitra has a very vast influence of uh, uh, time periods and cultures and religions so we cannot fit it into a single style of figuration but mostly it used narrative style of figuration so let us now go through the thematic analysis of the Bengal Patachitras uh, the Bengal Patachitra tradition is going on for ages and so the themes are related mostly to epics like Mahabharata, Ramayana and other historical folklore they basically try uh, to convey historical facts and human civilization, human culture is emphasized in the Patachitras. Patuas have expressed a viewed, viewed lifestyle of the Bengalis through the Patachitra. They have tried to show the life of the common man uh, in the form of their art. One of the, uh, one of the other importance of the Patachitra is that uh, they have been very essential to educate the rural populace regarding various things that are happening during that era. Virility based on Karma Yoga and ancient lifestyle expressed in the Ramayana Pata. Deep spiritual and philosophical truth is conveyed via Sakti Pata. Wavelength of spiritual loves vibrated through the Krishna Leela. We will now uh, try to find out what are the latest emerging trends in the Pata Chitras. So, uh, <clears throat> in the recent times, Patwas are playing a great role in creating awareness in the society. They have been using points, uh, they have been using their Patachitra to point out evil sides of many social rights that have been prevalent in our country and also the customs and political abscesses that are present in our uh, country. They uh, have started to use contemporary events as their themes and they have also painted uh, like the freedom movement, uh, the steamer or uh, the very contemporary event of, of brutal murder of a taxi driver by a female that's a theme on which uh, Patachitra has been painted and also like the advent of Kalikal and etc. Patachitras also have entered the international arena they are no more uh, li uh, limited to our country they have, pa they have been uh, shown in various international festivals that have been conducted all over the world they have depicted the role of disarmament they have also painted the historical event of French Revolution and they have also been symbolizing the victory of truthful mankind against injustice. So in all, the Patachitras have been shifting their focus uh, from the mythological characters to the recent events and the recent uh, social uh, uh, problems that are prevalent in our country so that they can educate more and more people through their paintings of the Patachitra. So this all we had for our uh, presentation. Thank you.